everybody, welcome. Hey, um, I'm Jason Framus um, with uh, Dig Boston. We can give you all our titles if you want, but we have a for-profit operation and a non-profit operation, and we'll talk about both. Um, but I'll just hand it off to my colleague. Oh, yeah? Introduce yourself. Hi. I'm Chris Ferrone. So I'm the editor-in-chief of The Dig, the newspaper that you have. And uh, yeah, I mean, and, uh, and the non-profit, I am the editorial director. And uh, are, are we doing backgrounds, too, or what? Yeah. What do you think? So uh, I am from Queens, New York, originally. I've been up here for 15 years. And I used to work at a, a weekly called the Boston Phoenix, which was kind of like the big weekly. Um, it's kind of like the Village Voice used to be in New York City. Uh, Village Voice is now closed down, but there's still 115 papers like ours across the country, and we are the one, uh, one of the last three in New England, and uh, one, right, um, and and we're the the only one in Boston, Cambridge, Somerville. Um, I guess I should just go over that real quick. Is so when people and you've probably uh, been bouncing around the region, you've heard versions of this. When people say like Boston or Greater Boston, you know Boston itself is a city. It's about half a million people, balloons to about a million. Um, uh, what? Well, yeah, but uh, with students, when the students come back, uh, are here. Uh, and also then, but then there's Cambridge and Somerville. So really when we're talking about the region, Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, uh, and also there's a city called Quincy, right south of Bo Boston proper. And these are really what constitute Boston. Also Brookline a little bit. Um, so it's kind of a loose thing, but our newspaper and our nonprofit, we cover all of these uh, municipalities, plus some other ones, uh, but that's really our, our key area. And I started as a music writer for these kinds of papers, for weeklies, um, but also for a lot of uh, publications. I was uh, Spin Magazine's hip hop critic for uh, some time, and I, uh, I've, I've written a lot about music for a lot of national publications. Uh, I wrote for Esquire for a couple of years, and, um, but really I'm a local guy. I love covering local stuff, and that's what, that's what we've really dedicated our careers to uh, at The Dig, and we're the last ones doing it in the way that we do. Um, and I guess I, you do your intro first, and then we'll talk about, I guess, how we do it. Um, so I, I'm a Boston native. I'm, I'm from here. I'm shutting off my accent to make it easier for you to understand me, but normally I, I, <laughs> normally I would have a, a heavy accent. Um, so um, uh, my career as a journalist has been, shall we say, highly idiosyncratic. Um, I uh, started primarily as a political dissident on the American left. Um, I'm currently a socialist. When I was a kid, I was an anarchist. You know, I'm one of those kids you see on TV wearing black and, you know, fighting with police. It was that kind of thing. So um, I think one of the reasons the State Department likes you all to come visit us is because we're sort of a dissident newspaper. So, in, and in some of your countries, we'd probably be arrested and or killed. So we were aware of that, which is why we kind of, one of the reasons we actually enjoy doing this. Um, so um, I came out of what was called the underground press. So the, the press that we're part of with Dig Boston is called the alternative press in the United States. They're both similar, the alternative and the underground. Essentially, the alternative press started in the late 1950s with the Village Voice that he mentioned in New York City. Um, and and uh, that kind of publication blossomed in the 1960s, especially with the LA Weekly and many other publications around the US. Mo most of the most famous ones are now gone. They've gone under. But they were known for their um, radical cultural coverage, you know, pushing issues like feminism, gay rights, and then also politically they're on the left historically, broadly speaking, kind of from the left wing of the Democratic Party over to people like me or beyond, right, in the political spectrum. And, um, you know, there used to be about, what, 500 of these publications at the height of this in the 80s, maybe, yeah, and so we're down to about 115, all of which are pretty stable. These are publications that typically come out weekly um, and that are, remain in print to this day. Uh, we're a 40,000 circulation weekly. And then we have similar numbers online. Our, our digital program is still building. Uh, we took over the, the paper um, uh, two years ago, last week, uh, actually. And um, the paper's 20 years old. Yeah. And Chris had worked for it before. He, he worked for, first for Dig, then for the Phoenix, which was a larger alternative paper that has now gone under. And then when that went under, he came back to this paper. And then in 2016, we had a chance to take it over. And in 2017, we managed to put together an investment group and do it. And now the journalists, you know, Chris, myself, and I, also our friend John Loftus, we, we ha completely control the company. So the inmates run the asylum. The journalists actually control the newspaper. 
Um, so it's an unusual situation. Um, it was made possible by our nonprofit, which I'll have Chris talk about, which we launched four years ago this month. Cool. Um, so I know, I'm sorry that we haven't uh, gotten time to learn more about, about y'all, but yeah, we'll do it in a second. But uh, but um, I'm sure you've been reading. I mean, there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of information out now. If you're reading places like Neiman Lab or Columbia Journalism Review, tons of articles about nonprofit journalism. Um, we are part of that movement. Uh, about when I came back to the dig. Uh, it was in 2013, and this is when I was doing a lot of reporting. I was writing for BuzzFeed a little bit, a lot of national stuff, back and forth to New York City to meet editors, and two big things happened in Boston uh, that made me really recommit to local journalism. One of those was the bombing of the marathon, and, one, and the other one was the <laughs> stepping down of our mayor of 20 years. Uh, so people in Boston didn't even know that it was possible to have another mayor, and suddenly there was a 13-way primary. So um, at the same time, the, uh, when I had come back to the dig, the dig really didn't have anything. I was an editor for the first time, and I had no freelance budget, really. Um, at the time, to make it quick, we were really... Uh, I'd always known about publications like Mother Jones and The Nation. I'm sure some of you heard some of these, the, the Progressive, the Independent. Uh, I didn't... And I knew that they had nonprofit mechanisms, but I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't really understand that they had a for-profit and a nonprofit that where they were really, you know, raising money, some monthly donations, grants, et cetera. Basically, money for journalism. And I just said, why can't we do that here? Why can't we just do that locally? Uh, and a lot of people just, like me, I, I didn't know why. I didn't know if we actually could. A lot of people said, you're crazy, this does, nobody's really doing that, it's more of a national thing. Uh, our big nonprofits, when people think about nonprofit journalism, uh, especially on the East Coast, um, especially in a city like Boston, we have the biggest uh, PBS, public broadcasting uh, systems channel um, in the country, WGBH. Are you, are you going there on your trip at all? Or, so the, what? Yeah, so you know, that's... They're, they're, they're the flagship. Frontline comes out of there. Um, so they have a lot of, you know, stuff. They, they have a big local operation. Also, a lot of the national stuff is generated there. Right. Um, yeah, they have waterless toilets. You know, what are you going to do? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice building, okay? So they are, yeah, they, they are the big operation. They also have an NPR, National Public Radio station there. Then there's an other NPR station. So this really, two NPRs, two, three all together. And they really dominate that conversation, right? So here we are. Uh, this is now it's uh, four years ago now. We come on. Jason had run a small nonprofit um, called, Open Media called Open Media Boston. So when, when I knew that we wanted to do something like this, I came to Jason. And we kind of put together this model where um, it's a funny story. Uh, but you could tell it better. So um, we put together a model in which I said, we don't want to just help the dig. If we're going to do this. We're going to be a central, I call it like a free-floating incubator, where we're going to do journalism for all the small outlets that need it, or as many as possible. Investigative, Investigative hard-hitting stuff. Um, typically, when you see a paper our size, um, they can't afford to do the kind of stuff. Some of the papers that you're holding, even this week's, there's a major expose that's going viral right now on a police situation in the uh, city north of here in Arlington. And... These are the kind of things that, you know, they take weeks, they take months. I, I'm guessing it's the kind of journalism that a lot of you do. Um, a lot of Freedom of Information Act requests, a lot of, you know, just really working with the reporter, working with uh, researchers, stuff like that. So, she is being threatened. We're going to, um, I'm heading up there after this. So, um, but basically, you know, we have worked with uh, dozens of outlets, including... Somerville Media Center, and really just always kind of trying to bring things that they can't do. So maybe they have the writer, but they can't afford to pay that writer extra, right? Maybe they don't have the writer. Maybe they don't have the editor. Maybe they need infographics and photography. We try to bring those resources uh, to the situation. So that's, and that's the, I have it right on my knuckles, B-I-N-J, the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism. Uh, so that's, yes, I'm the only, we don't all have it tattooed, just me. Um, that's really, that's been, and we call it binge for short. So when I, when I say binge, that's what I mean. But yes, um, binge does a lot of work with the dig, but we work with a lot of other publications as well. Um, are, are you staying downtown Boston or? Are you all staying different? 
So you'll see a paper called the Metro. Uh, that's the commuter paper. It's free. Um, Right. Uh, so we, we do the metros um, for, for a little bit more than a month now. A lot of their transit reporting we've been doing through the nonprofit. They're so in they're in trouble. They came to us. They said, we really can't afford to do this, all the stuff we want to do. So we said, we're going to handle some of your transportation reporting. Um, another situation is we're covering uh, some of the... Um, uh, some of the prisons out in western Massachusetts, which is like three hours to four hours west of here, um, for a uh, website out there. Um, and these are like heavy, intensive, months long investigations into um, corrupt prison administrations. Uh, and we have the second one of, uh, actually, second one this year, but we've even done more before that coming out soon. So that's how it is. People come to us, this is what we need, this is what, you know, what we can do, what we can't do, and we try to fill those gaps. Um. Should I go on or should we just have Erica talk about <clears throat> Somerville Media Center? So our, our host today is a group we work very closely with, the Somerville Media Center. <clears throat> Somerville is, uh, we are in Somerville, it's this town, city north of Boston, um, that has about 100,000 people. And so uh, Erica's organization is a, is a uh, well, you tell, you tell them. I mean, I could just stand here. Thank you all for, for being in Somerville. Um, four square miles, 80,000 people, very dense, a lot of development, a lot of construction. Um, gentrification is at its peak right now. So we as a nonprofit organization that's been around for 40 years is also trying to survive um, all of the exciting change as well. Um, but we are a nonprofit media arts organization. We're a community media center. Um, in the states called public access television. Has anybody heard of that term? Interesting, that's good to know. Um, so basically there was federal legislation back in the 80s that, that created um, an opportunity for um, cities to charge cable companies to allocate money for free speech outlets. Basically they were like, screw you cable companies, you're a big you know, telecom corporation, we wanna make sure that there's a space for local for localism on our TV networks, which is a radical idea. And through you know enough lobbying and activism and smart legislation, it it, it got passed. So we are in existence because of this um, you know very you know 40, 50, how, however many years, 45, 50 year old legislation. Um, but we are our heart and soul of what we do is storytelling and. Um, and in community building work through TV production, through podcasting, through radio shows. Um, and we are a place where people can get trained. You join as a member and um, you get training and you can produce whatever content you wanna do. Um, as our newspapers in Somerville started to dwindle, we recognized the need for, for more journalism. So we started um, a program called Somerville Neighborhood News as a way to train community members and get interns to help produce content as well to cover a lot of stuff that was going under the radar, right? As I spoke about development, a lot of development also involved developers getting away with certain things. So we try to, um, you know, uh, cover issues like that or cover issues about affordable um, housing, about, um, you know, homelessness, about um, immigration and, and different topics. Um, so we, yeah, we are, we are very um, thankful for the legislation that has existed. However, now with the Trump administration, um, who you know is very conservative and um, does not like the arts and journalism and free speech, as I'm sure many of you are aware, um, the Congress and basically they're they're trying to take away this whole source of funding and trying to rewrite the legislation so we want to exist. Same, you know, it's the same feeling that other, like, similar organizations face. So, so we're in our own um, intersection of figuring out what to do and how to kind of revive our, our vision and mission as a nonprofit organization while also sustaining ourselves, while also staying relevant. And, and really, I mean, relevance is, like, a, a huge, a huge means for why we want people to get involved with us. And journalism is a huge... Um, you know, outlet for us. We work with um, several different local universities in the Boston area because we are a mecca for a lot of um, higher education institutions here. So we have interns who come with us and they, they produce new segments and news podcasts as well and cover issues. Um, but we can't do it alone and with the support and collaboration with Chris and Jason, um, you know, I think we met 
probably four years ago at this point. Yeah, and we started like a regional news um, network where we try to work with other public access stations like Somerville Media Center around and developing content around topics that weren't just specific to Somerville, but they had legs beyond just that particular city because that allows for more outreach, distribution, relevance, 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 right? Um, so uh, yeah, so that's kind of a quick, a quick nutshell of who we are and what we do. Um, and it's interesting because public access television with that legislation, there's around 3,000 of us nationwide in the United States that exist. Now, Massachusetts is a privileged state in that there's a public access center where you can come, join as a member, take a class, produce whatever content you want in every single town in Massachusetts. So that's 251, I think that's, that's that sounds good, but 351. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, we basically, you know, we, we don't, we, every place has different policies, but at the heart, anyone can get involved and make content. It could be controversial content or it could be very radical content. We follow the First Amendment free speech model. That is essentially at the heart of what we do and in whatever storytelling format that is. Um, so, right, so Massachusetts, we have around a few hundred uh, media centers in the state, which is impressive. Other parts of the country, it's not, as, it's not as much of a priority. Some of that money that the municipalities get from the cable companies, that they, that they charge them for that fee to use the public rights away. Some of that money goes into public safety, which is also a really important resource. It goes into snow removal. <laughs> I mean, there's like different areas, so not everybody finds free speech as important, but, um, and right, and there's, yeah, and there's legislation, and then questioning our legislation, so. Oh, right, right, yeah, and then, right, and Trump is trying to derail all this wonderful, um, beautiful uh, local journalism, so. Um, hopefully, are there any Trump fans in the room? <laughs> all right, no, it's a safe space. Um, <laughs> Safe space, there's a door. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. First Amendment free speech. Um, so why are you here? What is Vox Pop? Um, so Vox Pop means, to anyone, Latin? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So very, very, um, yeah, fist pump over here too. Um, Voice of the People, it's very relevant. Um, we are a very rooted community organization and we want to always reflect the voice of the people. Um, and this is actually where you are in Assembly Road. This is the most newest development in Somerville. And it's, you know, um, it's very different. It's very, it's retail heavy. It's a glorified residential mall living experience, right? Um, so we've been partnering with them, because why? Because they have money because they want to give nonprofits money. So, you know, they're, 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 looking, they're looking for partnerships to, 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 have positive, um, to have a positive PR, right? And it's an interesting intersection of, of tapping into where people want to give money. And um, they look to us as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to activate a vacant storefront. This was a shoe store, okay? We are only in here from May 9th until the end of August. Um, I basically was like, what the hell are we gonna do with this place? And so I worked with local Boston artists, all these art, this artwork on the wall is Boston landmarks, different artists over here, the public library. Um, we had a Narcan training in here before you guys just got in here, which is a, 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 you know, a, a way to survive over an overdose, um, opioid overdose, right. So it's such an interesting different programming that exists in here. Um, and so we're trying to bring like a community pulse to Assembly Row. Um, and it's been an interesting, yeah, uh, journey. So anyways, I'm really happy that you all are in our space today and um, curious to know where everybody's from. Obviously, I'm sure that's going to happen. So yeah, so thank you for letting me. Yeah. And um, their main studio is about a kilometer over that way. So this is an auxiliary one. Um, all right, like, all right, let's find out who you are now. Um, and this, this doesn't actually work as a mic, so I'm just going to hold it up.
have you said it? Okay. Okay. I'll face like this. Okay. I'll go to the stage. Ah. Ah. It's not easy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name, <laughs> my name is Ochia Kaugu. I'm the feature. I'm from Nigeria. I'm the feature editor of People's Daily Newspaper, and uh, we focus on people, a social problem that inflicts uh, the society. In my country, there are a lot of uh, downtrodden, and we report mostly about them. We report also about uh, climate change, which has dis displaced a lot of people. Fueling insecurity, fueling terrorism, fueling displacement. So these are many more is what we focus on in my newspaper. Thank you. No, it's not a microphone. Oh, we're gonna have a speaker now. So who's next? Who wants to speak? You can stay where you are, or I'll never hear you from the Thank you. Thank you. Stand my friend, stand, 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 stand. I'm nervous. I want you to be here. Uh, you're working on the standing on the mic. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay, my name is Ochone Klache. I'm from, uh, my friend uh, Ochiaka likes to say he comes from the most populous black nation. I come from the most, uh, the smallest uh, black population. On <laughs> yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an investigative journalist for the Namibian Sun, a local daily. I wanted to be the last one. I'm Loretta Mekwe, and I'm from Botswana. Um, I am. I work for a digital media company. It's a magazine. It's a, it's a startup. But I worked for a radio station for the longest time as a content producer. I'm also an artist. <laughs> you stuck? She's stuck. <laughs> Okay, hi, my name is Nobi, I'm from Mongolia, and I work for a weekly magazine called Gerig and a website called uh, UB.life. So, thanks for having us tonight. Okay, hi. Hi. Amiga. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Guatemala. My name is Angel Mazariegos. I work as an investigative reporter in a website called Plaza Publica. Um, don't worry. I I I started um, there as a journalist, and I'm in the business. Hi, I'm Mika from Kazakhstan, and uh, I work as a TV reporter in a Republican um, TV channel, and uh, I really love Boston. I would like to study here. Yeah, we have about 60 institutions of higher learning within a 30-kilometer radius of the city center, so it's, there's over a quarter million students a year. Yeah, thank you. Costa Rica. Hello, my name is Andre Ramirez. I am from Costa Rica. Uh, I work for a TV channel in Costa Rica, and I love Boston too, and Boise and Tampa and <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. Gracias por todo. Who's next? Hi, my name is Jing, and I'm from Singapore. I work for a local Chinese newspaper, and I report business news. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot to share, but I decided to give more time to the gentleman next to me, because <laughs> since the moment we come in, he's very interested in your space. He keeps saying, that, these people are real. This place is a good place. OK, so now. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is um, Camera, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> My name is Edward. I come from uh, Sierra Leone in West Africa. Um, 
I'm very, I work for BBC Media Action, which is the BBC's international development charity. And uh, we focus more on governance and accountability, gender, and also health and behavior change communication. But on a personal level, I am very interested in alternative media. Um, we're currently incubating a project with some friends of mine. We're looking at um, setting up an alternative media outfit in Sierra Leone. So I'm, that's why I'm very excited about this meeting. And I'm really interested in what you guys do and probably talk about it later if we have time. Thank you very much. I, I mean, once you meet us, we're friends, yeah, you know, to, if you want to be friends, so you can always talk to us about anything that may be relevant between our countries, you know, and media. Who's next? Uh, hi, my name is Johannes from Suriname. I'm from South, uh, in South America, country in South America. Um, I work for the evening newspaper, The West. I'm a journalist there, and I cover politics, economics, and LGBT. Hi everyone, I'm Harshana from Sri Lanka, and I work for Harshana from Sri Lanka, and I work for a daily newspaper, and I cover foreign affairs and economics. Oh, were you, were you there for uh, for Xi's visit recently? No. no? <laughs> Hello, my name is Augusta. I am from Angola. I work for the uh, Angola Public Television. Uh, I cover, uh, I report about uh, uh, social and economic issues. Who's next? <laughs> my name is Alpha Wawa. I'm from Tanzania. I work for Tanzania Public Broadcaster as a TV reporter, also a news anchor. Thank you. Okay, as you know, I'm Justyna from Poland. Uh, I'm a TV host, TV reporter, uh, like previously TV reporter. So now I, ho now I host um, like live programs concerning news, both Polish and international. That's me. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Do you get to cover the giant feminist marches? This Sorry? Time? Do you get to cover the giant women's marches that have happened? In Um, hello, my name is Gabby. Jason, it's nice to meet you in person. This is oh, I'm a woman too. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, I'm from Connecticut, which is a state right next to this. I, the nutmeg state. Yep. <laughs> We're very sad people. Uh, Anyway, yep, so I will be working for The Dig this summer. I've been invited because all of you are so cool, and I got to share in this, so excited to meet you all. Hey. Nice to meet you. Alex, I'm from Portugal. I work in a daily newspaper in Portugal. I, I, yeah. Well, my name is Alex. I'm from Portugal. I work for a daily newspaper in Portugal called Publico. Um, I write on a foreign affairs desk and mainly about your president, American politics, your president. <laughs> Portuguese guy, come on. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm Thomas. I've been sober for 12 hours. Um, and I'm, I'm from Holland, and I work for a weekly magazine as a foreign news reporter. 
And this is a guy from Serbia. <laughs> That's enough, you don't. <laughs> well, hi everyone, I'm Zoran from Serbia, and I work for local uh, radio TV station. <laughs> uh, I imitate him, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I work for the local radio uh, TV st uh, radio radio station and and local uh, website called Zero. Call 021. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lucia Osvaldova. I'm from Slovakia. Uh, it's uh, in the middle of Europe. If It's a really small country. It's a really small country. Really nice, really nice. <laughs> And um, I'm a reporter for um, independent newspaper. It's called Dalian. Actually. Yeah, she's Albanian and I serve and we uh, have just completely different opinion where are we from, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sanja Sovlić, I'm from uh, uh, Kosovo or from somewhere else, depends from perspective. <laughs> uh, who, I mean, who, who follow uh, Balkan issue can understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm, uh, okay, uh, I'm editor and journalist of uh, online portal in Serbia language, but I had a lot of experience in TV journalism because I, I was like uh, TV reported I think seven years or uh, doesn't matter and I uh, have experience in different uh, media outlets uh, and actually uh, I just uh, want to use this opportunity because uh, we are almost three weeks uh, here and we uh, had a lot of meetings and uh, learned many stuff, but I just wanted to say uh, that uh, the most important thing of this program is to have all those people. And actually I learned for, from them a uh, lot of stuff. Okay, uh, maybe I, <laughs> I, I shouldn't say more, may, maybe even more than from <laughs> in US, but anyway. And it's actually a nice feeling to have uh, all those people around the world to like uh, to can have have a coffee in all those countries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, she just gave a very emotional speech, and now I have to compete. I'm the last one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to add to Sanya's word that uh, I think uh, meeting the people is like the best part of the trip. Like seriously. <laughs> Meeting uh, all of you. Meeting with all of you, yeah. yeah. Where are you? Wait, I'm coming to that point now. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm Dafina from Kosovo, from independent Kosovo. <laughs> no. For no, 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 <laughs> so, no. Uh, I am a human rights journalist. I work for a magazine called Kosovo 2.0. We are an online magazine, and uh, besides uh, doing uh, writing, multimedia, we are actually have a space a bit similar to this where we try to organize um, different discussion on different uh, topics. So it's, let's say, like the alternative people of Kosovo kind of like really reach to us. That's great. Mm. That's it. Still the of well, no. no. <laughs> 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 I had many questions. <laughs> Got to do that rock step. <laughs> right, right. I'm Mark Fallow, one of the uh, State Department liaison officers traveling with the group around the country. And it's been great. I agree with them on having formed these friendships from around the world. Invaluable. Come on, come on, come on. 
Amazing. <laughs> Who am I? Where is Linda? Oh, where is L I'm Bruce Cohen. I'm one of the lucky liaisons that gets to accompany these people all over. And it's been an honor and a pleasure. Miguel, you should come up for a second so you laugh. It's okay, man. No, I mean, Miguel, you should. Everyone. Go. Um, hello, uh, my name is Miguel Hernandez Mercado. I'm just an intern with these guys. Um, from the this week's cover story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, uh, I'm from the Dominican Republic. I'm also a citizen of Spain. I made it here as an international student, and I'm a recent grad. I just, just interned with them now. And that's it. Yeah. Right now, we have 15 interns, by the way. Okay, my name is Linda, and I am also a liaison traveling with a group throughout the United States. But I would like to take this time to tell you that um, you are in the presence of an incredible group of journalists, investigative journalists, people from all over the world. And it is our pleasure to be introducing them to a lot of their counterparts here in the United States. So it's been a, a great three weeks, and uh, I'm going to miss them. Oh, is, it, is this the end? Is this the last? Is this the are you, when is is this the end of it? Yeah, it's the last city. Oh, yeah. It's the last city. Hi. <laughs> um, my name is Katya. I'm the other lucky liaison to be uh, a part of this family, this uh, group, community of um, inspiring individuals, and uh, every day you make me a little wiser, a little happier. So thank you for that. One thing I want to say. Um, I don't know, should, should we have Matt introduce himself, though? Say hi, Matt. Matt. Yeah, we'll <laughs> he's, a, he's a sales guy with us. He just started. Yeah. Matt. Matt Master Nuncio, right? So, so um, I want to say that I've been participating in this program uh, from State Department in one form or another through World Boston, the nonprofit here in Boston, since 1995. Um, and... Uh, I, when I was the uh, leader of the National Writers Union chapter in Boston. Uh, it's one of our writers unions uh, for the freelance journalists, mostly. Um, and I f the first person I met was a Hungarian uh, journalist um, from the Hungarian Writers Union after the communism ended, right? So it was a very interesting meeting, you know, like hearing what had happened from his perspective, all this. And every job I've had that's media related since, I've been meeting with these delegations. And I just, I always thought it was kind of funny because I'm a, I'm a usually a constant critic of the American government, especially of the State Department, at least aspects of it. But, you know, it, it, we are an interesting, complex, and sometimes confusing country, and, you know, stuff works out. This has been a great program, and it remains a great program, so we love to do these things and meet folks like you all, like, all the time. So I just wanted to say that. Um, now, um, you all should open up. I, well, I just wanted to talk about yeah. the paper real quick. So I just, uh, just, just because, like, uh, I know you visited a lot of different kinds of newsrooms and, and reporters, I just wanted to talk about, you know, what, really to us um, what alternative journalism is and what we do it and how we put the paper together every week. Um, so first, and you know, those who are looking to do some further, uh, um, you know, who have a, a larger interest in this, our trade association, what, com what, what, um, what marries all 115 of us around the country uh, is something called the Association of Alternative News Media, uh, AAN. And we're all different, you know, really you kind of, uh, it obviously, it depends on what city you're in, you know, what really needs to be covered. Um, and it, the, the classic definition of alternative media, I'm sure this tr translates well, is basically we cover things that aren't being covered by particularly major news outlets, and then we cover things that uh, we think that they're covering wrong. And one example of that that I always give, because it is just, it's just so, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's so different the way we cover it, is, is surveillance. Uh, the uh, so-called mainstream media, or even our daily paper, like the Globe, really views surveillance as a convenience. Okay, we don't have to stop our car at the tolls anymore. Uh, things like that. Uh, we look at it different. We really have dug 
very deeply into the uh, uh, surveillance state in the United States. Some of our biggest, um, some of our uh, uh, biggest and uh, most famous work, um, some was even fe uh, featured in a BBC documentary, has been around uh, optical character recognition, um, uh, automatic license plate readers. Uh, we also, uh, our biggest concert that actually just happened two weeks ago in Boston called Boston Calling, it's a, a massive concert, um, I think over the course of three days, something like 30,000 people. We found that right after the Boston Marathon bombing that IBM went to uh, the city of Boston privately and gave them facial recognition software uh, to use biometric surveillance and that it was used on every single person at, um, uh, at, the, at these concerts and uh, secretly. There was actually no contract had been given to the city for free. Uh, so we do a lot of that kind of reporting. Um, we like to, we lead. Uh, we really don't cover a lot of things if they've already been covered. We always, the, the kind of joke and, uh, 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 is that, you know, papers like our, uh, you know, college papers report things, then papers like ours steal from the college papers, then the dailies steal from the weeklies, radio steals from the dailies, and television steals from everybody. No offense to the television people. Um, and, you know, obviously there are a million exceptions to that, but really we like to get on the ground of stuff. You know, we really tell our, our interns, our young reporters uh, that, you know, they... <laughs> We really, it, we're not pandering to them, but we're not treating them like interns. They are our eyes and ears, all right? Um, and it's not, I'm gonna talk about this all like, not just news, so sure news. Jason and I, we have an institutional memory. We've been, I've been covering the State House for 15 years in Massachusetts and Boston City Hall. Jason knows Cambridge City Hall very well. We both know Somerville um, pretty fairly well. Uh, and then there's, you know, Jason knows labor. He has a, a background in labor. Um, so we have that knowledge. But as far as the people on the ground who are hearing things, uh, we have a city council race in Boston right now with more than 60 candidates. Well, we're behind a desk, you know. It's, it's up to our people on the ground who are out there. Um, and with the consolidation of media, with so much media getting cut in the United States, that's what's really been lost. You know, so you have your big outlets where really, even an outlet like the Globe, a lot of stuff is being covered by young reporters from behind a desk. We want them out there. And, and, and I don't want to forget to say this, is that as you'll see with some of the covers, we brought covers from the past couple of months, um, it's not just hard news. Uh, we also value our arts and entertainment reporting and our food and drink reporting. Uh, it's critical to the local economy and the local ecosystem. Uh, we do not, um, oh God, I don't want to get too far into it, but we really do not. We get a million uh, emails from media relations people every day, publicists. I'm sure you all deal with this in some capacity in your own right. We don't talk to them. Uh, we'll block them. We, we'll yell at them. Don't fucking email us ever again. We do not talk to publicists. <laughs> we, dis we, we decide what we're going to cover. Nobody else. Um, so we will sometimes not always just write about the hottest new restaurant but rather maybe a place that's been around that's doing something cool, all right? Um, for music, we, we do sometimes cover big acts that are coming into town, but 80% of our music coverage is local artists. There's a million of them, all right? And uh, so we're really, um, so our arts and entertainment report, uh, reporting is, is uh, critical. We even use some of our budget from that nonprofit to support arts and entertainment reporting because with media, with you know media cuts, what they've been, a lot of that has gone away too, and all anybody's ever yelling is, "How about the how about the investigative? How about the investigative?" But it gets to the point where you have you know really tremendous local talent that nobody knows anything about. You know, we have uh, we have a couple hip hop artists who uh, who have are now national, charting on Billboard and touring the country. And uh, one of them, his name's Cousin Stiz, a Rolling Stone magazine wrote that he was from the wrong neighborhood. Why did they think that? Because there's no, there's no foundation. There were no building blocks for, you know, the history of the media has always been that, you know, by the time somebody gets bigger, you know, whether it's an actor or, or a musician, there's already, been, there's already been content done about them. That foundational work has been done, and now that, that's been thrown out the window. So we really try, and you'll see, I mean, we're a small p paper. There's obviously more online than you see just in the paper, but even something like theater. Boston has a significant local theater scene. Um, a lot of uh, plays go from here to Broadway next, um, particularly at one of our theaters, American Repertory Theater. And um, sometimes we'll cover three or f even four plays in one week. And we're the only paper doing theater coverage. 
Um, so things like that. So I don't, I didn't want to miss that. I know a lot of you are investigative reporters. That's what I am at uh, uh, core two. Jason uh, also a muckraker. Um, but basically, that's all important to us. And certainly, when we talk about alternative weeklies, if you were to see any of these papers across the country, we should have actually. Next time, let's bring more. Um, you'll see that that is really the split. And a lot of the times, I was telling Matt, our new sales guy, this before. Uh, sometimes we will put the hard, uh, the hard news on the cover. You know, we had a year-long investigation into gun violence that we put that on the cover a couple weeks ago. But most of the time, um, was it Mary Poppins? You know, a spoonful of sugar to make the medicine go down. So you'll see a lot of our covers are lighter. You know, um, sometimes even a celebrity like David Sedaris, we got the only interview, he's a famous American author. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know how international he is, but Chloe Savini this week. So we'll do, we do that stuff, but usually the cover will be lighter fare. Arts, entertainment, food, music. And inside, that content is there. But the first half of the paper, from Jason's column to our news, to our features, hard news, um, investigative news, a lot of this stuff, uh, in almost every issue, there will be at least one piece that has been in the pipeline for months. It just happens to come out that week. Through the nonprofit. And that's how we could pay for that. Well, you know, now that we are building and getting bigger, we have people like Matt who we brought on who I will not be handling sales. The sales that I handle are really accounts that were there and that had to be managed. Um, but honestly, uh, we, you know, I don't know, this is obviously different in everybody's country. We don't do advertorial, you know. We don't do pay for play. You can't come to us and say, here's money, we want an article. For good customers is what I tell them. Um, you know what, we're going to... Oh, for good causes? Good ca we give away ads for nonprofits. I mean, if nonprofits have, um, I mean, honestly, a lot of the time it's something we're interested in anyway. I don't really, the, for us, the, the investigative stuff, the stuff we do in that front of the book, like, you know, if the concert venues that, average, that spend tens of thousands of dollars with us every year, you know, if they, if they, they, they really don't lean on us very much. People know, you know, we're not, we're not that outlet. On the other hand, I always tell you know if there's a restaurant that advertises with us and they have a patio, and we're doing a roundup of the best patios, you bet we're going to include that one. You know, um, so long as nothing compromises our core investigative, uh, municipal, like the real the reporting hard reporting stuff. Um, you know, that's really what it is. But honestly, this is and this I'm not alone. You know, we work with all these small outlets. I'm showing you. This is really how it is. I mean, this is the publisher of place. Boston has a really robust. Um, uh, uh, community journalism network, Dor outlets like the Dorchester Reporter, Jamaica Plain Gazette, and this is really, you, a lot of the times you'll have the publisher really top down doing a lot of this stuff. And I'll also say this, um, it's, you know, I really shouldn't be throwing stones in my glass house, but honestly, you know, when you look at a place like the Boston Globe, I have found out on Freedom of Information Act request, I've seen um, coverage suppressed Okay, through the editorial process, you know, with pressure from the other side. Um, and that was around the Olympics. That's why we were able to get public records. Um, I, I really feel this compromise across the board. I really, we really try to be honest and open about stuff. If it's an advertiser that, um, that we are writing, as, uh, we did an event with The Atlantic magazine two weeks ago. All right. So that was an event. Our name was on it. And we interviewed the author. It was an author event. And we said, we're doing this event with them. Our... For us, really, and it sounds cheesy, honesty. That's really what it is. We're honest with our, with our readers. And honestly, our readers know what an advertorial is. You know, our main competitor went out of business a month ago, and they did a whole bunch of that shit. And nobody believes it. Nobody trusts it. People stop picking it up. Yeah. But we bought them out. So there it is. Well, thank you very much. It's been, this has been fantastic.